We've heard a lot of talk today about how to make our classroom teaching more effective, what we could be doing in the classroom to help our students, what our students could be asking from us, what we can do for them. But I want to shift the conversation around a little bit and talk about what our students can be doing for themselves, what we could be asking from them. It's really loud. Um, We've had a great discussion about flipping the classroom, and flipping the classroom is such a significant development from the traditional didactic mode of teaching, which for so long had led to students' passivity or boredom, or worse, I think that poor guy actually passed out. <laughs> Having students actively learning through the flipping innovations we've heard today, like collaboration and peer review and interactive exercise marks a significant change for the better. But I want to challenge you today to challenge your students to continue that active learning outside the classroom because we can't actually be sure that they're doing that. Now, why do we care? Why do we care what our students are doing outside the classroom? Well, as law professors, we're in the business of training professionals. We're cultivating advocates and advisors and counselors. We're training a new generation of leaders. And to do that, we really need independent thinkers. We need students who do more than simply prepare for class. The law is an active profession, and we're better to learn how to be an active participant in it than in law school. And once we create that culture of expanded active learning, then we'll have students who are prepared for the practice of law. Now, I think that expanded active learning has wide application, but is particularly relevant in the area of legal writing because it's crucial that law students learn the skills of self-critique and self-edit. I mean, lawyers, it's what we do. We write. Now, I came about the idea of expanded active learning this way. In my experience teaching legal writing, I find that students typically take one approach to their papers, which is the draft and wait. So we have a lot of discussion in class about a particular assignment, and the purpose, and the audience, and the structure, the underlying law. And then the student goes off to draft her paper. And if history is any indication, it involves mounting levels of hysteria as she tries to fill the empty page before the looming deadline. So it's a lot of crazy mad typing, and then it's save and send and whew, sit back and wait. And wait for the professor to provide her comments, wait for the professor to point out what's wrong with the paper and how to fix it. And during this time, the student is doing nothing. She is not thinking about her paper anymore, and she's certainly not thinking about how to fix it. And if there is a conference, it typically centers around the professor's comments on the paper with the students you know, doing the nod, right? You know the nod, the, do you hear what I'm saying? Yes. Do you know, understand what I'm saying? No. <laughs> I found that this model wasn't really working for my students. I found they weren't really thinking critically about their written work, and they weren't thinking analytically about the writing process. They were just waiting passively for me to tell them what to do, and this marked that shift to that passive mode of learning that we're trying to steer our students away from. And so I began to wonder what I could do, and after one too many conferences in which I would ask my students, do you have any questions, and the only question they would have is, how do I accept your changes in my document? I realized that I had to put them to work. I wanted them to apply the learning principles that we were, the active learning principles that we were doing in class on their own. And so one step I took was to create a self-editing checklist and require my students to review their papers on their own. Um, I have to say the self-editing checklist is a little bit of a misnomer because I'm not asking my students to simply check items off a list, but to actually substantively reevaluate their work. So this is how it goes. So about 24 to 48 hours after a student submits her paper, she receives a checklist. And I give them this gap in time because studies have shown, and as we all know from our own lives, how the familiar can become invisible. You know, that big stack of papers on your desk you don't see, or your spouse, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so some time spent away from a document can really sharpen your critical eye. So armed with the checklist and a fresh set of eyes, she takes another look at her paper and she considers each portion of the paper and the paper as a whole and asks herself again, does this actually work? And as she's going through each portion of the paper, she notes the areas that need correction. She thinks about how it could be corrected as well as any areas of confusion or questions that she might have. On this particular sample that I have on the screen, the student was asked to self-edit the office memo and the self-editing checklist I've applied to the office memo, every document, pretrial briefs, appellate briefs, complaints, transactional documents, 
And in this particular one, you'll see on the screen, this portion that's shown on the screen is that she was asked to evaluate her question presented. And so I provided some general guidelines about what a uh, question presented should include or things that she should consider. And she, I asked her to take another look at her question presented and to evaluate it against those guidelines. And this particular student noted that she actually included too many facts in her question presented and it made her question presented then too clunky and difficult for her reader to understand and that on the revision she knew she was going to have to call those out. And she went through each part of her paper like that, noting the areas that needed revision, thinking about how to make them better. And then she took all of that with her and brought it to the conference. And the conference now was centered on her thoughts and her comments about how to make her paper stronger. And I, as a professor, really acted more as a facilitator. I was the one who got to do the nodding, right, while she led the conference. And she, in this way, was really actively learning. She was, in, in essence, becoming her own teacher. And only after the conference does the student receive my written comments on her paper, which now include this very rich discussion that we had together. That now includes this really rich discussion that we had together. Um, I found that there are multiple benefits to this approach. The first is that since the students are actively engaged with the material, they take greater ownership of their work. They feel more responsibility for it. When, because they, they themselves have identified the areas that need fixing, they have greater incentive to fix it. They have been now internally motivated. Along those lines, I found they have greater mastery of the material, of what I'm trying to teach them. My goals in teaching legal writing, again, too, because I've identified the areas that they feel need revision, they can understand better why and how to fix it. And finally, it makes life a little bit easier for me. You know, those typical superficial mistakes that students often make on their papers, the typographical, grammatical, George Bush-like kind of errors. I really don't have to deal with those anymore because students will see them on the self-review and they will fix them themselves. And typically, a response that I get after they've done such a self-review is, I am really so sorry that you had to see that. <laughs> now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, she is amazing. She is the world's best law professor. I would love to say that this works beautifully all the time, but it doesn't work beautifully all the time. Some students are so enmeshed in that passive mode of learning that they don't want to engage in this active exercise. It is a little easier and somewhat comforting to have someone point out what's wrong with something and how to fix it. Um, what I'm asking students to do is difficult. I'm asking them to change a mode of thinking rather than just simply receiving information passively. But when it works, it works so beautifully. When it works, I, I see this increase in the student's professional reflection that she's no longer drafting documents simply to fulfill the requirements of a course, but because she can understand better the goals of what I'm trying to teach her, that she wants to become a legal writer. Having my students self-critique and self-edit over a period of time and over a number of papers helps them see their development as legal writers. They become more as actors in their own education. Now, as I had mentioned, uh, expanded, uh, expanded active learning has wide applications. So you doctrinal professors, you should feel free to join us, jump in the pool. Water's really fine here. Um, having expanded active learning in the doctrinal setting helps, would help your students really master the legal principles that you're trying to teach them in class. Having them grapple with those legal doctrines through simulated exercises or projects, much as we have heard today, would help them see that their learning of these principles is not merely theoretical or academic, but practical and applicable and relevant. Now, is this easy? Sure, it's super easy. No, it's not easy. I lied. It's not easy at all. And does this create more work for you? Yes, it creates more work for you. But if you do this, we will have students who are learning how to be critical, not just of what they are reading or the written material, but about how the law works and how they can use it. Because really, that's what we're striving for, right? We're trying to get to that goal. Having students or teaching our students what the law is really is only one of our goals. Teaching our students to be fully engaged, to be thinking about the application of the law, the many uses of it, how they could go about doing that, to have them actively thinking about their education and assessing and reevaluating and thinking like a lawyer to prepare themselves.